Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a situation that happened to me two years ago, um, actually the gas explosion. Um, I felt like this would be an, an appropriate time to talk about it since I haven't really been open about it and I felt like for the last two years I've been healing from it. Having this platform is also kind of a very therapeutic healing platform for me because um, I get to be open, I get to be transparent, I get to do things that I haven't done before. Okay, so let me tell you guys a little bit about that time frame in my life, like where I was. I was working at this law firm where I was getting bullied. It was just a horrible experience. I had two jobs and I was taking night classes. And Monday through Friday I'm working my law firm job and then at night I'm taking classes and then weekends, Saturday and Sunday I'm working my weekend job. So when that explosion happened, I was just so busy. I didn't even have time to self-reflect. I didn't have time to focus on anything else. The Sunday, I remember October 14th, um, that's when the gas explosion happened. I was trying to grill, use those, you know those propane gas grills? All I did was switch it on, go back, pick up the lid and I'm just like, boom, boom. And I'm literally on fire from head to toe. Um, I'm screaming water, water. Thank God it was, I see the pool. I run to the pool, I jump in. Shoo! I go to the hospital and see my leg. It was just gray. My whole leg was just like from my knee to my toe was gray. Not even gray, black. It looked like a burnt piece of chicken. I knew at that moment I was, whew, I knew I was, I was in some, <laughs> I, I was in some BS. Look at my lashes, and I was, it was just stinging, 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 stinging. I'm screaming, I'm screaming, ice, nothing's helping. Of course, they give me some <laughs> drop, you know, put me on the morphine, I'm like, ooh, okay. So, but that moment, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be okay, you know, thinking I'm fine. Because now, you know, you're in the hospital, you're on these drugs you're not really processing what the hell just happened to you you're thinking life's going back to normal anyway i get discharged go home thinking i'm okay my job is like oh when you coming back to work so i, have, so I pretty much have one leg tiptoeing with one leg i go to work with my one leg you know i go home cleaning my leg my leg looks like an elephant i just knew my leg i said i'm not even gonna google you know, because I Google everything. So I was just like, I'm not going to Google. Like, I know this is some BS. I'm going through some BS. Like, this leg is not okay. <sighs> so in the morning, I pretty much text HR. Like, listen, I will be I will come to work late. Maybe after 10, I only have to go and get my leg checked. up just to make sure everything's okay. So they're like, cool. I get to the hospital. The nurse opens up my leg. She's like, okay. And she looks. She doesn't even say anything. She just walks out. She brings the doctor. Doctor's like, Miss Smith, today we're gonna have to take you for an emergency surgery this morning. I'm looking at him like, huh? Emergency? What? Yes, you have to go for surgery. And I'm like, do I really need it? You sure? I'm even kind of, Do I really need this leg? That's how. <laughs> I was just like, I am not about to go under the knife alone in a foreign country without my family. Now very much me, Mrs. Independence, Mrs. Gypsy traveling the world since I was 17 on my own, you know, I moved here. I was so independent all my life and at that moment <laughs> it just switched. I was just like, mommy, no. And then that's when all the nurses at the hospital just came They're like, no, don't worry. Like my big baby, like my eyes changed. I wasn't even like complete panic mode. Inside I was in panic mode. I was just sad. And then I'm just like, How, am I clumsy? You know, I went through those moments. I feel like I'm skipping a stage, but let me just explain to you why I felt clumsy at the moment. So when I got shot, it was a mistake. 
I pulled my uncle's gun. I didn't know it was a gun. There was a gun under a pillow. I was trying to get a pillow. And as I pulled the pillow, it fell and I got shot. And I didn't even know I got shot. I so when the gas explosion happened, I went through those emotions of, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have been using it. But anyway, back to that moment of being that little girl, wanting your mom, wanting that nurture. I had to like pretty much just say, okay, the reality is I have to do this. I have no option. I pretty much like went through it. Thank God they didn't tell me when I was about to have surgery. They're just like, oh, inhaling here. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Boop. Gone. I had that. I had a moment when I went into surgery. When I came out, I remember the nurses even told me I woke up very, like, screaming. And... I think at that moment I really didn't like process what was happening until I woke up and I was in so much pain my leg was just hot it felt like it was on fire like if the doctor told me like miss meant that do you really mean this leg I would have been like why are we gonna stop the pain and he's gonna be like yeah i'll be like no i don't need it no more that's how i felt i felt like do i do i really need a leg you know so it wasn't so the surgery that i had it's it wasn't just a skin graft i like the bone here i lost like they pretty much they like, carved a bit of a bone I was, that didn't really traumatize me so much it was the aftermath of being at home by myself not being able to do to do the things for myself that i usually do being stuck in bed for weeks just laying and processing things that i should not be processing at that moment thinking of things that i should not be thinking of at that moment i could not think of anything happy it just felt like every time i tried to bring a happy thought and i closed my eyes i saw flashes of fire i was on fire you know, my leg was on fire. It was just like, I couldn't close my eyes. I was literally like this. I didn't sleep for weeks. Whoo! Whoo, Lord! Lord! Mental health is so important, hey? Process things when things happen. Because I just, I just wanted to move, move, move. So that surgery maybe it was even a blessing in disguise because i got to sit down i was ready to go back to work after the gas explosion my job was blowing up my phone to come back they didn't care about me healing i was just another number to them and i was going back into that so i felt like maybe that's why my leg wasn't healing i went back to the hospital to go and now i had to have that surgery where now i literally could not walk i couldn't i didn't see it that way at that time though at that time I felt like, oh my gosh, why me? So bad luck. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I should have just used the oven in the house. Like, I was going through those emotions, trying to figure out how could I have changed the situation. But we always try to, you know, be the masters of our lives. You know, we're not in really in control. Yeah, we're in control mentally, but it's other forces too in our lives that are in control so sometimes you just have to <sighs> i was really sad when i couldn't do what i was used to doing i couldn't take care of myself you know so i was trying to rush the healing process i was trying to get better trying to get better i had no time like i wasn't thinking about mentally i needed to heal i was thinking like I need to get my leg, I need to start walking, or I need to at least heal fast enough so that I can get on a flight and go home back to South Africa. Oh. Bear in mind, I went through this mo motion where both my legs are like this <laughs> on the bed. And this leg is messed up already, excuse my language. And this leg is, I don't know what's going to happen with this leg. So I went through those emotions and I'm just like, whoo! When I started physical therapy, I was doing physical therapy for both legs. Because this leg had so much nerves on the exit and entry wounds. That's why it, that I still had to keep doing those exercises. Once I was able to fly and you know my leg, I, oh Jesus, I, the, the first thing I did was 
get on a flight and go home. I guess because I was at home, I just did a switch again. You know, I don't know how my brain works, but my brain did a whole switch. And with that switch came not dealing with what was going on inside. For me, it wasn't like, I'm, I don't want to be sad and thinking about it. I don't want to, I just wanted to move forward. But I'm trying to move forward, but my brain didn't get the memo. Like, ma'am, we're moving forward. My brain is like, no, we're still stuck on October 14. I'm still having flashbacks. I go home, I guess being around loved ones made me, it brought my spirits up. And I thought I was okay. I came back. And then I guess the acute stress disorder, the PTSD started coming up in my chest. I just started having a lot of panic attacks like I would be driving and I would just be getting a panic attack or I'd be laying down and I'd just be getting a panic attack I just didn't know what the hell was going on <sighs> and then um, my boyfriend at the time he was just like you should see a shrink don't get me wrong I was always open into therapy but I never really um, thought I needed it I thought I was okay and, but even though I thought I was okay, I thought, okay, not that I didn't think I needed it, I just was too scared to really go. I don't know, I had a very weird relationship with therapy before. I loved it from the outside, but I was too scared to step into it. Maybe that's what I should be saying. But this year was different. This year, I just knew I needed to heal. I needed to feel whole again. I just knew I couldn't live on flight mode. Like I was I knew I was okay, but my brain didn't know. My brain was always thinking I'm in danger. And I I, I didn't know how to switch it off. So every time I was I felt like I was having those panic attacks or whatever, I felt like I was in danger. I was releasing a lot of adrenaline, a lot of cortisol, you know, a lot of chemicals that was making my body sick. And that's what stress does to you. And that's why I had to make that switch to do I want to continue living like this? Or, or do I want to feel whole again? But it's not something that I even called on myself. I just thought, for me, I couldn't sleep. I just thought I'm closing my eyes and I'm seeing flashbacks. I knew something was wrong. Trauma from the gas explosion definitely brought up the trauma from when I got shot. Because when I got shot, it was, I never had therapy. I never went for therapy. You know, but it was different because when I was younger, I could able to create a mental box and put things in a box and put that box away. I think I call it a little black box. But the black box came back up when the gas explosion happened. It was just like, boom, open, yeah, we're here. You know, process us. You have to go through it. So I went through that. You know, it, it came up, the box came up, sorry, but I didn't know the box came up. That's why this was harder to process. Like the gas explosion was harder to process than, the, than when I got shot. Because when I got shot, I think when you're younger, I think we have more room to put things away and not think of them ever. But it's not that they're gone, it's still, you know, playing in our lives but it's just in the background but you, you don't think about it so I put that box away but the box came up when the gas explosion happened and then it was just a whoosh and I was just like oh my gosh that happened such a long time ago it, it's not affecting me it's not affecting me you know like there's no way that could also be affecting me till today uh, how I also knew that affected me was when I saw Megan getting got shot on a foot that kind of triggered me but thank god this time i was in therapy so i got to process that in therapy in a safe place so and i realized that i never healed from getting shot last year was a year i had a lot of anxiety and i could feel i was just getting sick and sick and sick and my immune system just started getting weaker and bear in mind, I'm dealing with like my leg healing and you know, not even just so much healing too. The new normal of how it looked, that, that was hard for me. Everybody has their thing, like some people like their boobs, 
some people like their butts, some people like their hair, whatever. My thing was my legs, like my actual legs. And I have really nice calves in the back, so my leg was my thing. I'm like, ooh, you have nice legs. So price, that was just like so hard for me to look at my leg and think like now this is how my leg going to be. I was so like sad about it. Um, it I was in pain too. I could. It, it was a lot of emotions. Now I was going through. It's not just the trauma of the events. Now it's just this new normal of my leg and the numbness and the pain and not being able to be in the sun. You know, like just covering it up and just. Now I always felt people were looking at it even when they weren't. Just learning to accept it. That is a whole nother video, but. I'm, in a soul level, now when I look back, I understand that was part of my contract. That's something that I knew that I needed to go through, you know. I chose that path. I went through that in order to bring me here so that I could sit down here and tell my story to anybody else who's going through it. When you go through a, a, not just a gas explosion or getting shot, even a car accident, anything at that moment that you feel like oh, you're about to die, that can cause PTSD or any kind of acute stress disorder, you have to definitely take time out to yourself and sit and be patient with yourself. Because that time is very, very vital on how you think about the situation or how you feel about yourself and what's going to be the outcome of that situation because there's only two ways you brain you're either going to heal or you're going to continue with the trauma or moving like a person who can't really feel safe because that's the worst part is you don't ever feel safe feeling safe is so important that's where you nurture yourself. That's where you let your guards down. That's where you get to be vulnerable. That's where you get to be yourself. So, when a person has trauma and they don't feel safe, you don't get to know that person. It's not just people, it's situations. You kind of get scared of everything. You're always like shaking. You always, you know, I had a lot of that. Everything shook me. Everything, I was just like, whoa! You know, like I couldn't stay still. I was always ready. I don't want to live like that because I was living like that since I was 11 and it's sad that nobody noticed because I never went for therapy I just dealt with it I just isolated I just cried a lot um, but I dealt with it and then you just slowly 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 you know the box put it in the box put it in the box and then one day you know you just move on you're just the puppet you're just moving but there's this emotions and feelings that are making the moves for you that you don't even know about and that's what was happening to me a lot I hope my story isn't my story isn't just for people who have been in accidents or who has like super super trauma it's just like knowing that like if you feel you have panic attacks or if you feel you have anxiety notice your breathing this how I notice when my anxiety or my tension in my body or my stress level is high, I notice my breathing. So if I breathe smooth like this, like no, ah, okay, I'm okay. But if I'm breathing like you know, it's kind of like hard for me to just take a smooth deep. But I'm just like, oh, child, I know that it's time for me to tap. You know, it's time for me to check in with myself. I don't want so, anybody to think that you have to go through something really huge to have stress or anxiety or any of the situations I'm talking about, like the panic attacks. It happens to people who have stress in their daily lives, just with work, school, parents, or anything that can be triggering you or making your body, you know, not or making you not feel good about yourself just check in with yourself and just try to see how you're breathing because a lot of the times we think we're okay but we're not and I want us to be able to check in that meant like I've, I've, I went the holistic route 
I've never been on any antidepressants, any Xanax, any of those medications. But I'm just saying if I had that much anxiety and that much stress and I didn't have to go through or I didn't have to take any medication and I worked in and in tune with my body, I think you guys can do it too. So even if you're getting stressed from work, make sure you check in with yourself because you don't want the stress to build up. You don't want to like that stress to come out in how you love yourself or how you love people around you or how you talk to people around you with yourself and check in with your breathing and see how you're feeling because if that stress builds up you're just gonna have more stress more stress more stress more stress so if you're checking in every day at least you're clearing a little bit of the junk your brain has these mechanisms like panic attacks or anxiety it's kind of also like a protective thing to kind of like whoop I feel like for me it's protected me for a long time now I'm in a place in my life where I have to let it go and I feel like a lot of people especially in our generation where people have these walls up you know people don't want to get attached to people yeah it's it's that same mechanism that we've had for so long that we hold on to and now it's time for just to break down those walls you know, it's time to be vulnerable, it's time to trust, it's time to love, it's time to just nurture each other. My main goal, not just in therapy, but spiritually, you know, mentally, in life, is to love with no attachment. You know, love people and not expect anything in return. And to be vulnerable and open completely now it's just like <sighs> I felt like a cocoon for a long time and now I'm a butterfly. <laughs> you know, when things when things happen to you, you always think it's so negatively. And now that I'm you know, like a lot of people are like, Oh my gosh, you got shot, oh my gosh, this happened to you, oh my gosh, that happened to you and oh my gosh, you bad luck, so many bad things happen to you. But I have so much I have soul experience. My soul has like evolved so many levels that it's hard to um, get me to react now on a negative level. But whatever God brings my way, I'm okay. I'm okay. I've had cancer scares, I've had biopsies this year. You know, I went through that whole sh shebang. <laughs> time I went through it I sat there smiling I cried I cried for like a minute because I was like I'm here again I'm sitting here I'm happy every day I wake up I'm thankful for the day I have now I notice how blue the skies are I can hear the birds chirping even louder now you know the waterfall outside the sound just calms me you get to enjoy and you see things differently. Like, life just changes. It's like, everything's just more vi vibrant right now. As I learn, as I grow, not just as a woman, spiritually, you know, like, I want, it, I want, I want to see where it leads. And I'm telling you, I'm enjoying this healing journey. And the reason why I started this platform is because I wanted to share the things that work for me. I just want people to start, you know, enjoying themselves and I didn't even realize how much little exercises like the self-care routines that I'm going to be sharing with you makes me feel good about myself. So I think when you do these self-care routines, you're like nurturing your body to you send kind of like some kind of calming chemicals to your brain to be like, whoo, maybe maybe Madame Mazel down there is safe, yeah? That's what the brain brain is saying. Let me chill a little bit. Let me see. Let me not be in danger mode. So maybe try just nurturing yourself if you can't get into therapy or anything right now. When you start feeling good about yourself, you'll start vibrating higher. You start attracting the right people. Don't get me wrong, I still attract narcissistic people and sociopaths. Um, it's just easier to, to read them out now. You know, before I'll read them out after six or seven months, I'm like, woo! Now, 30 days. <laughs> In 30 days, I'm like, uh-uh, mm -mm, something ain't right here. Also, attracting the right people comes with also being the right person too, feeling right. I hope my experience 
help somebody else, any other burn victims or anybody with stress or anybody going through something right now, anybody who went through surgery because that alone too is traumatic, you know, when you come out of that, the pain and I just hope that this brings some kind of light and hope for you. I hope that you love yourself a little harder right now. I hope you nurture yourself a little harder right now. Check in on yourself every day. Check in on your emotions. Don't ignore the emotions. Do not ignore how you're feeling. Try to do high vibration stuff. Laugh. You know, watch comedies. Be around loved ones. Anybody who's making you feel negative right now, don't be around that person. Give yourself a tight hug and love yourself. With that being said, thank you so much. And I hope you guys subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those good stuff. Thank you and see you guys next week.